I see videos like this on my news feed almost every day. Hey, don't block the road, guys, please. And in this fight, there are no winners. Recently, we received an email from a viewer. Clearly a cyclist, he says he feels cyclists aren't welcome anywhere in Singapore. So in this episode, I'll find out why it seems impossible for cyclists and motorists to coexist and what it'll take for us to get along safely. To start off, I want to know what motorists and pedestrians really think of cyclists. So I'm commissioning a survey with a media research consultant. So I've seen some of these social media videos online and people were quite um, angry. So I want to know whether it represents the general population's uh, feelings. A quick brief with the research consultant. Um, I really look forward to getting the results of the survey after you're done. Great. And I'm off to meet the person who posted this viral video, which shows him chasing down a cyclist. So I don't think you should be on the road. The way you cycle, no helmet, no nothing. Salan Ayob is a cyclist himself, and he says he encounters errant cyclists on the road multiple times a week. Why did you feel that you had to chase after the cyclist? Okay, so basically I was uh, on the way home, uh, and uh, I saw him weaving in and out of vehicles. The possibility of him falling and pinned down under a vehicle is so high. It was about 6 p.m. peak hour traffic. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So you went up and scolded the fellow. Not really scolded. I would say I advise him to what I know best, mm -hmm. and. Uh, I try to ensure his safety. Nowadays, you see the cyclists on the roads are getting younger and younger. They assume that what they do is always right. So for motorists, we've got lights that can indicate whether you want to turn left or right. But for cyclists, do you recognise what they are signalling? What signals? Basically, you don't really see any signals on the road. Uh, when they want to you know, move to the right, they just slowly start inching to the right. When they want to move left, they just inch to the left. Cyclists are supposed to wear a helmet when cycling on the road, keep as far left of the road where possible, not swerve in and out of vehicles, signal with their arm when they do need to change lanes, and slow down when approaching a crossing. These are just some of the many rules this cyclist was breaking. Salan's series of TikTok videos garnered over 380,000 views and about a thousand comments in total. Netizens largely commend him for educating the young boy and spoke about how most cyclists today think they own the road. Which begs the question, how well do our cyclists know the rules? To find out, I decided to ask the cyclists from amateur cycling group Joyriders. They've picked up road cycling within the last year and set themselves apart wearing this. A uniform which makes them more identifiable, so they're mindful about not breaking any rules. Okay, first question. Cyclists can ride against the flow of traffic, true or false? Everybody says false. Well, absolutely right. Cyclists can ride on the right side of a motor vehicle in the same direction when overtaking. True or false? Well, looks like most of you don't know this one. <laughs> All say false. The answer is true. You can ride on the right side of a vehicle when you are overtaking. Between 7 p.m. to 7 a.m., cyclists who do not display lights at the front and rear of their bicycles may be fined up to $1,000, imprisoned up to three months or both. Is this true or false? Wow, you guys find it too harsh? Well, this is actually true. <laughs> Has anybody got all right so far? Aww. Okay, so how do you guys think you fared on this quiz? Uh, we didn't know we were so lousy. <laughs> a lot of the rules, um, yeah, we didn't come across or even think about it. I mean, before I started cycling, I did Google, uh, you know, some road traffic sa safety rules on cycling. Uh, I could find some on LTA. There's quite a bit to, to, to read through. 
Uh, and being a motorist myself on the roads, I think generally you get a sense of what you should, what you can do and what you can't do. As a newbie, I, I learn learn a lot from the senior. Yeah. So uh, after more more rides, you get a bit used to it. You get uh, you know do what the experienced riders do, follow them, keep in line. Out of eight questions I asked, the team only got about half of the questions right. Yeah. True? Everybody says true? Well, you are right, it is true. People should be more aware of these rules, not only for cyclists, but also for motorists, because uh, there are a lot of times when we practice proper hand signalling, but the motorists on the road itself don't know what they're trying to do. I think Singapore as a cycling city, we have never been. As a cyclist myself now for the last couple of months, um, one thing I have realised, you hit, you wrong. They hit, you are gone. Do you guys think that there have been more cyclists on the road misbehaving? Even though they are relatively new cyclists, I'm still a little surprised at how badly they fared on the test. They said that they didn't know there were so many rules. Many of them took their cue from experienced cyclists. So counter to what Salan said, the team thinks that there aren't more errant cyclists on the road. So who's right? After two weeks, the survey results are in. Over 500 people, motorists, cyclists and pedestrians gave us their views. Eight in ten respondents claim there are more errant cyclists on roads today. Authorities are reviewing rules for cyclists on roads, including the need for theory tests. Will this make roads safer for all? Somehow when you're not in a car, you do feel kind of naked. I'm on a mission to find out what it will take for motorists and cyclists to get along. As more people take to cycling, authorities are reviewing existing rules to see how road safety can be improved. This could be registering bicycles, licensing cyclists, or even limiting group sizes for cyclists on roads. When asked what respondents thought should be the top three new rules that need to be implemented for cyclists, our Talking Point survey showed that having all road cyclists licensed through a theory test came out tops. Currently, you can go on the Land Transport Authority's website to search for road rules and a code of conduct. So a cyclist would have to take the initiative to learn them before hitting the pedal. To be honest, before this episode, I didn't even know there were so many rules. I think a test would solve this problem. I want to find out how this can possibly be done, so I'm meeting Terence Lee. He's the man behind Bike Guru, an online platform where he provides expert tips and advice for fellow riders. And he firmly believes that all cyclists on the road should be licensed. How do you think this licensing should be carried out? The authorities can actually introduce the cycling theory test that is linked to an individual's NRIC. So does that mean bicycles also have to have a license plate? No, I don't think the license plate will work well. Some people ride rental bicycles, some people own multiple bicycles, and some people buy and sell their bicycle very often. License doesn't mean it, it must be physically attached to the bike, yeah. but it can be like something like our driving license that we keep with us. Anything happens, traffic police can trace who is the cyclist, and um, they'll be able to find out the information about that particular person. So in essence, what you're trying to say is that cyclists should be treated like any other motorist with a, with a theory test as well as um, insurance. Yes, that's right. So the uh, equilibrium of fairness to all users who want to utilise the road. Do you think a theory test is adequate? Adequate to a certain extent only because cyclists need uh, more experienced cyclists to bring them around to show them the practical side of what they actually learn from the theory test. I never cycle on the roads, 
So Terence is going to guide me and give me a taste of what it's like. I'll be all right. I'll stay alive, somehow. In the interest of safety, we're going to ride within an estate before attempting to go out onto the main road. Even within the estate, the roads are busy. Terence is making sure it's obvious to all road users when we are stopping or when we are turning right. Okay, heading towards the main busy road now. It's about 9.30 a.m. on a Tuesday morning and the main road is packed. Somehow when you're not in a car, you do feel kind of naked. We are riding really slowly, so I guess the motorists were quite wary of us. But I realised that not all cyclists follow the rules. There was one instance where the cyclist blew past us on the main road without informing us that he's overtaking us from the right and that could have ended very badly. Besides getting cyclists to take a theory test, is there a way we can make roads safer overall? Professor Raymond Ong certainly thinks so, by having dedicated bicycle traffic signals and lanes. Professor Ong researches what it takes to create car light towns. The biggest problem that cyclists face on the road is those uh, cyclists who want to right turn and this cutting create conflict points between the bicycles and the cars and potentials for accidents to occur. We actually built a model uh, based on uh, one typical uh, multi-lane junctions in Singapore but this is hypothetical and not to say that this junction has a problem. So basically you can see from this video that we have some bicycles who want to turn right, some bicycles who are actually going to go straight and some are going to turn left. In some cases, the cyclists may not react or may not move that fast or the vehicle do not see them. So how can we address this problem? Let me show you through another simulation. Sure. So this simulation basically shows that the same junction that we have earlier, but with our dedicated bicycle lanes as indicated in green. So uh, you can see that the cyclists are physically separated from the uh, car and they actually have a safe place to ride on. And those who are turning right will actually have a dedicated signal for them. Based on this model, I've noticed that the cars have to wait. What will it take for this solution to be applied across Singapore? This is actually a trade-off that uh, we actually have to assess. For the heavy vehicle junctions, it may not be that feasible at this point, but as we are moving car light, uh, the vehicle traffic will start to decrease over time. Currently, Singapore does have an on-road cycling lane at Tanamira Coast Road in Changi East. It's about two meters wide and has raised profile chevron markings to separate it from other motor vehicles. But there are no more plans to build such roads. Instead, authorities are focusing on building off-road cycling paths as part of efforts to triple Singapore's cycling network to about 1,300 kilometers by 2030. So if there are off-road paths in residential areas, why do we need on-road paths then? On-road and off-road are also serving uh, various purposes. For example, uh, for off-road cycling path, uh, there will be actually cases whereby uh, it's quite difficult to actually uh, move from, uh, let's say, estate A to estate B, which uh, is disconnected because of roads in between. Many of the cyclists may actually face this problem. Uh, but if it's on the road, we are actually relying on a interconnected road network that can actually uh, make uh, longer distance travel by cycling much more viable. It has also to be coupled with uh, clear regulations and code of conduct on how cyclists should behave on the road. And I believe that uh, we should be actually moving towards that direction. But of course, uh, we will have to be uh, cautiously optimistic on uh, what uh, the prevailing situation on cycling is and, and the take up rate on cycling. Cycling has experienced a surge in popularity around the world during the pandemic. But together with that, 
Preliminary data also shows that cyclist fatalities have increased. In the US, there were 84 cyclist deaths on the roads in July 2020, a 25% surge compared to the month before. In the UK, there were 15 cyclist deaths in March 2020. That's double the figure compared to the same period the year before. In both the US and the UK, the higher fatality rate is attributed to higher car speeds and more cyclists on the roads. In Singapore, as recent as N May, a 14-year-old cyclist died after an accident with a trailer. Cyclists are more vulnerable on roads compared to motorists. This is why off-road cycling paths are seen as a safer solution. But are they really? It hear sound like ding, 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 and then you get scared. Don't know where it's coming from. Apart from the roads, cyclists in Singapore can ride on cycling paths and park connectors. But these dedicated lanes for cyclists are not connected across the island. This means cyclists are forced onto footpaths, which is allowed. But it turns out, not only do people want cyclists off roads, they also want them off footpaths. Talking Point's survey on public sentiment regarding cyclists shows that some 7 in 10 people feel that cyclists should not be on footpaths, compared to about 6 in 10 who want cyclists off roads. When asked to rank poor cycling behaviour overall, speeding on footpaths came in tops. This is despite the speed limit for cyclists on footpath, which is 10 km per hour. And the more I delve into this, I'm finding out it's not just cyclists on footpaths that pedestrians have a problem with, it is in all shared spaces. I went on the ground to find out why pedestrians are so upset with cyclists. And I spent some time observing foot traffic across a few neighbourhoods. Sometimes they go. When the cyclist outside here hit the little boy, he's trying to avoid the boy, and the boy trying to avoid the bicycle. <laughs> Once I was walking at the red portion, and then the cyclist shouted at me, you know, said, hey, you're not supposed to walk here, you walk the other side. You know, then after that, another time I walked on the brown, brown pavement, he said, hey, you're supposed to walk on the red side. Well, I also got confused. I, I didn't see any cyclists actually stop uh, when they come to any obstacle. They're kind of rushing and they just go through it. And like food delivery sometimes. We as a pedestrian, we are walking on the footpath itself. There is still cyclists coming from behind. But they actually can use the one on the left hand side. So that, that is the thing, la, because uh, if you want to have foot path with cyclists, then you have to enforce it. Most people I spoke to say they have witnessed close shaves or accidents between pedestrians and cyclists. And almost everyone said that they were fearful of cyclists when walking in public. So I'm reaching out to Dr. Go Mui Heng to find out exactly how dangerous it can be if you get hit by a bicycle. For accidents involving pedestrians and cyclists, what kind of injuries do you commonly see? Usually uh, injuries involving the face, mainly what we call facial fractures or um, bleeding in the brain as a result of the fall. Sometimes when they try to break their falls, they get fractures in their forearms. So if we look at this uh, image here, this is a 3D reconstruction of a facial fracture. Mm -hmm. This patient has sustained a fracture on the right side of the face here. Oh. Yeah, so the patient probably landed uh, and hit his face uh, on this side. So like these x-rays of the forearm here, we call this a distal radius fracture. Basically, this bone is broken when the patient tries to break the fall with an outstretched arm. Yeah, it looks like the hand is completely disconnected from the rest of it. Who are usually the people who are involved in these kind of accidents? The ones who are severe enough to get admitted is generally about one to two a year. Um, 
50% of them were actually 70 years old and above. Half of them. Uh, so the older patients, they tend to have uh, slower reflexes. They are maybe not so steady on their feet. And so it's uh, it takes a little bit longer for them to react when something happens. They do fall down sometimes. Uh, they may not be able to break their fall. And as, as a result of that, sustained head injuries as well. Older folks, uh, it's easier for them to get bleeding in the brain because what happens is that as we get older, um, the, the brain shrinks. And uh, when the brain shrinks, there's actually uh, connecting blood vessels between the brain and the covering of the brain. So when these blood vessels um, are stretched, it's easier to cause a breakage in these vessels and as a result of that, it will cause bleeding within the brain. Wow! 50% of pedestrians involved in accidents with cyclists are above 70. It's no wonder our survey reveals that people want cyclists off footpaths. But then on the roads, a different problem ensues, which brings us back to the question. So can cyclists and motorists coexist? I strongly believe yes. Provided cyclists understand and practice road rules, such as signaling their intent to stop or make a turn. But motorists also need to recognize these signals. And when it comes to cycling on footpaths, where there are no barriers to physically separate cyclists and pedestrians, everyone should go slow and pay attention to other users in the shared space.